I'm playing with transformers again today and I suspect that some of you would rather I move on to something else. Uh, but what I was uh, inspired to uh, to continue were looking at transformers and I've actually got some other ideas that I may uh, may follow up on as well. But it occurred to me, I was watching a uh, video this morning that uh, Blue Glow Electronics put up on output transformers in which he was helping someone figure out how to buy a replacement transformer for a, for a piece of equipment that had a bad uh, that had a bad unit. And while I was listening, I was anticipating where he was going to go. And uh, by the way, it's a very good video, and I'll show you the uh, the link here in a little bit. But the uh, uh, he he I thought what he was going to talk about in would going to include the fact that push pull transformers and single ended transformers are actually built differently. Uh, but he didn't actually talk about that. He talked about a, a number of other really good things, but uh, I recommend that you take a look at that video. So here is the uh, video that I was watching that inspired me to come back and look at Transformers some more. And what I was uh, expecting was he was talking about the fact that this transformer has three wires coming out of it but it's not actually a push-pull transformer it's actually a transformer with a screen grid tap but the way it's drawn I'll let you watch the video it's a good video I recommend that you uh, that you take a look at it before uh, well at some point either before or after uh, watching the rest of this video but uh, but the thing he didn't talk about that I frankly thought he was going to when he started talking about the difference between a single ended and a uh, push-pull is the fact that they are actually built differently. Uh, push-pull uh, output transformers do not have an air gap uh, in, the, in the core while a single ended does. And we'll talk about why in a second, uh, why that difference. But instead, he was talking about the fact that some transformers have a screen tap. If you've watched any of my videos or anyone else's videos about ultralinear amplifiers, you'll know that the idea of tapping the transformer to supply the screen voltage began a long time ago and was uh, you know, given the name ultralinear for that, uh, for that particular design style. So, uh, at any rate, watch this video, and uh, if you want to continue, continue with this one. Uh, otherwise, stop this one and go over to that one and come back. Let me uh, zero in on this a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm measuring, and let me back out so that it'll be a little more obvious what I'm doing. I am uh, the Peak Atlas... Uh, inductance meter is connected to the uh, to this winding and the uh, I have a power supply connected to one half of the other winding the power supply is this uh, uh, siglent that I have reviewed in the past, and I think many of you have uh, probably seen that one. And what I'm going to be doing is applying a little bit of DC voltage to this transformer. And But first, before we do that, let's measure the inductance of this uh, winding. And you see we get 141 millihenries. I'm going to do that one more time just so you'll see that the readings are consistent. Now what I'm going to do is turn on a power supply with, and I'm going to put 80 milliampers through 
the other winding, not the winding we're measuring, and see if the inductance changes. And you see it goes to 175 millihenries. Now I'm going to increase the current to uh, 160 milliamperes or 0.16 amperes and measure again. And you see we now get 172. Now, in case you were expecting that when we increase the current we would get an even higher inductance reading, let me remind you we are dealing with a hysteresis curve, which is very nonlinear. And a hysteresis curve, what we are doing is we are, we are magnetizing the core of the transformer with a DC current. And, and we're measuring the inductance of a winding using AC that is also wound around that same core. So, why is that of importance? Well, in push-pull amplifiers, because the, uh, and let me go back to the, uh, to, to Blue Glow's video to talk about this. This is a single-ended stage that he's showing here. And the, the screen grid is connected to a tap on this uh, transformer. And once again, go watch this. One reason I'm, I'm pausing this is, is so you won't be tempted to watch it here and go over and watch it on his channel. Uh, but when a single-ended Class A amplifier, plate current is flowing in the same, in one direction, constantly through the transformer. And so wherever the tube is biased, if the, because it's class A, that means the current is flowing all the time through the tube. And it always flows from cathode to plate, and then through the transformer and to the DC supply. So there is a constant DC current flowing in the primary of a single-ended output transformer. But a push-pull output transformer, that's that's not true. There is a current flowing in this side, but with a push-pull, there is an equal current flowing in the other side through the other tube, but it is opposite in direction. And so those two DC currents tend to cancel each other, and, they're, and therefore they do not magnetize the core. That's the reason that if you are buying a transformer, the only thing I would add to the Blue Glow video is if you're buying a uh, transformer for a single-ended set, make sure you're getting a single-ended transformer that has an air gap in the core. If you're buying for a push-pull amplifier, you don't need the air gap. In fact, you don't want it because it adds an inefficiency to the circuit. So at any rate, I thought that might be something of interest to some people, but I had two reasons to uh, to make this video. The first was I just wanted to uh, point people over to Blue Glow Electronics and this uh, neat video on audio output transformers. And also, I wanted to add the uh, fact that push-pull transformers and single-ended transformers are not built the same. So just be careful when ordering them that you know what you want. Otherwise, you may get the wrong kind of transformer and you may wonder why it doesn't really work very well. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this. Stay tuned for some more things and have a nice day.